OK, so this is a question from B3 on environmental indicators. And it's a six mark question. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a look and work out exactly what the question is asking me. So the first thing that I've spotted immediately is that there's a bit here that says both living and non-living. OK, so I know that I know, need to talk about both living and non-living indicators. So it says environmental change can be measured using both not living and non-living indicators. Describe and explain how named examples, there's my next key, OK, of these types of indicators can be used to monitor change, OK, in particular environments. So what this is telling me is that I have to talk about living and non-living I have to describe and explain how named examples, so I'm going to make sure I name my examples, and I need to talk about the indicators used to monitor change in particular environments, so I'm going to name my environment as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is make a few notes and then come back to you. So, what I've done now is I've made sure that I've gone through and I've picked out my key points that I've decided that I need to answer from the question and I've just bullet pointed them. So I've named my environment, um, I've just decided I'm going to talk about rivers and streams and then I've had to think, right, okay, so it's asked for me for living and non-living indicators. So I've made a list of a couple of living indicators. So I'm going to talk about, because I'm talking about rivers and streams, I'm going to talk about mayfly larvae and I'm going to talk about biotic indices, so the Trent Index or BMWP, okay? And my non-living indicators I've chosen are dissolved oxygen levels, nitrates and other pollutants, and pH levels. And then I've thought, OK, it's also asked me to talk about change, monitoring change, and how are you going to do that? Are you going to measure it over time? So now I've got my bullet points of the points I want to make, I'm going to sit, out, sit down and write out my long answer question. So I've bullet pointed my answers. And so now I've written these out in longhand. So the first thing I've done is I've made sure I'm really clearly answering the question. So I've said environmental change can be measured in rivers and streams. So there I've named my environment, OK, rivers and streams, OK, by looking at the change in non-living and living indicators over time. So I've made it clear that I'm looking at change over time, so I'm monitoring change in particular environments. And then I've listed my non-living indicators. Now, I started off before listing my living indicators first, but I thought, and you might see why, it would make more sense to talk about non-living indicators first. So I've said include dissolved oxygen levels, levels of nitrates and other pollutants, and pH levels. And then I've made it really, really clear what's good and what's bad by saying dissolved oxygen should be high, pollutants low, and pH neutral. Okay. Then I've said living indicators include mayfly larvae because they require high oxygen levels, biotic indices such as the trend index and BMWP. High values such as a trend index of 10 indicate good quality habitat. So I've made it really, really clear what good quality habitat is. So the next thing is to look at this with the mark scheme and see how I've done. So here we can see my answer with the mark scheme. Now, I'm hoping that I've got up in the five to six mark range. So let's have a look and see if I've managed it. So the environment named, yep, I've said here rivers and streams. So that's one tick, excellent, okay. And several indicative points from both living and non-living areas. So I've made it really, really clear where my non-living and my living indicators are, and I've got several points in each. Brilliant, okay, really happy with that. And it says quality of written communication does not impede communication of the science at this level. So I'm hoping that I've got a really nice, clear, orderly um, answer there. So let's just take off my other marks and check that. So environmental change can be measured in rivers and streams by looking at the change in non-living and living indicators over time. Non-living indicators include dissolved oxygen levels, levels of nitrates and other pollutants and pH levels. Dissolved oxygen should be high, pollutants low and pH neutral. Living indicators include mayfly larvae because they require higher oxygen levels and biotic indices such as the Trent Index and BMWP. High values such as a Trent Index of 10 indicate good quality habitat. So hopefully I've got that one. So I think that's quite a good 
good answer to this question, but let's just check through the other side of the mark scheme. Have I talked about some of these points? Okay. Non-living indicators. Have I talked about nitrate levels? Yes. Excellent. Okay. I've talked about, I haven't talked about um, litmus, but I have talked about pH. I've mentioned oxygen levels. So I've got a good range of indicative points from um, the non-living indicators. And living indicators, yeah, I've mentioned mayfly larvae. I've mentioned the Trent Biotic Index. Um, and I've also hit one of their points for examples of environments. Doesn't have to be one of those because they've just said it's an example. Um, and I've hopefully got all of those right. So that is how to answer a question on environmental change and biotic indices. Made with DoodleCast Pro.